Hi, this is Jack Lipton, and today I'm speaking with Pat Ryan, the uh, chief executive of UCOR. And uh, I want to talk today, Pat, about your very successful uh, approach to processing rare earths. And I, I, I have a general question to ask you. Uh, you know, people are are applauding UCOR for, for what it's done, and, and you're going to be building a full-scale let's say strategic metal center, if you still call it that, in Louisiana, and, and you're, you're planning to have a product out by first quarter of 2025. And what I'd like you to, to tell us is how long it took to do this, because people are thinking, well, I'll just jump into that when I feel like it, and yeah, you know, I'll be in production in 18 months. I hear this all the time. And and uh, I was a consultant, as, as I'm sure you know, to UCOR, from I think 2012 to 15. And the focus then, even then, was looking for a, a, a universally applicable separation technology. And I know that the company uh, dis discovered the uh, uh, Rapid SX in that period, and now it's um, nine years later. So can you tell us how easy it, it's been to get to the point you're at? Yeah, uh, well, Jack, you know that things never happen overnight. And um, my background, as you also know, is in the automotive industry. And I've had the, um, the pleasure of uh, working with teams that have actually uh, brought four different industrial plants on board in North America, supplying the automotive industry uh, through my career. Uh, the most recent one was an expanded facility of uh, 80,000 square feet that happened in the middle of uh, start of COVID and uh, supply chains when you start building plants and getting stuff done in the middle of COVID is a, a real challenge because everything from steel to conduit to whatever is an issue. But you're right, uh, UCOR went looking um, you know, for a separation technology when they realized that bringing Volcan Mountain, the Alaskan resource online, um, would still need separation to critical rare earth oxide. And also realized that those rare earth oxides were really the, the, the margin or the um, a very profitable part of the business going forward. Not to say that the mining isn't, but that, that critical mid-market certainly has a lot of uh, upside opportunity in it. And um, started down the road of trying to find um, the best technology to make things happen. And, and I would say that the company probably strayed too far off the center line. And by that, I mean that if you're going to get something done in a, a commercially viable time, if you go too far down the trail of looking for tech that's going to take time to really prove out, uh, there are things that you would know, Jack, like CPK, which is continuous process capability. Those are terms used in automotive and other high process industries. There are statistical based indices that tell you whether or not your process will make it to the finish line with assuredness day in, day out. So the company started looking at nanotech, um, you know, five, six years ago. And I was a director at that time. And I had my reservations because I knew that the nanotech uh, didn't really have any grounded um, uh, industry commercial opportunities that I could point to and say, well, here, this this, this works very well and here's why. Uh, then in um, late 2019, heading into 2020, we did a lot of due diligence trying to find what could be the technology needed for separation that would actually help you get the job done and do it in a commercially viable way. That's when we found Innovation Metals Corp. And in May 2020, we purchased Innovation Metals Corp. They had a lot of good data. They had a lot of good um, uh, white coat lab activity. They had uh, some good metrics that were pointing in the right direction. And I could see the technology was not a leap of uh, faith, meaning that um, it was grounded in something that you could look at and go, okay, if you really westernize this tech, meaning take solvent extraction, currently used for separating rare earth in China and, and westernize it. And when I say westernize it, use less power, use less labor, use less chemicals, less reagents, you could get to where you needed to be. So full circle back to your, your uh, question, you know, here we are three years later and we're now finally, uh, we've picked a building and we're, we've uh, built a commercial demo plant. We're ready to plug the commercial demo plant into a full scale building. And that building will take another year and a half to get ready so we can actually process with the tech and start serving customers. So timeline wise, if you go back and look at the search for best tech for separation, probably five, six years. Uh, more specifically, uh, once we found the tech, we're three years into it and we'll be four and a half by the time we're there and ready to run. But it looks to me like like you've, you've made this work and, and you're right. 
this is what I call evolution, not disruptive technology. And I, I hate that term. This is the evolution at the margin of, of, of a technology, just like everyone does in real industry. Okay, the, the, for some reason, people think that, oh, there's, there's a new, like, um, what you were talking, nanotech, and that's going to work, and no problem, you know, fine. And, and then it, it, nothing happens. But when you take the existing technology and you improve it, and apparently you've been able to do that, that's a, that's a real winner. It puts you at, at the leading edge of, of that technology. And since you're starting, you're, you haven't got an existing plant to redo, uh, you're way ahead of the competition. Although in North America, I don't think you have much competition. That is true. And, and you're making a couple of key points there, Jack. Uh, one, one being the, uh, the Brownfield building. You know, we didn't go to Louisiana with the state support and federal support and, and have them say, here's a pile of money, build a building, because that would actually put, take a whole lot of time to, to then pull together. So we found a very appropriate brownfield building to get things done. And, um, you, you know, the, um, the, the white coat, lab coat people, they play a very important role uh, up to a certain point. And when I say that, it's, it's, I mean that, that the, um, the lab techs that are really important and the PhDs that go with it are really important. <laughs> They, they would love to continue to work at the lab scale level forever and write white papers and do all that stuff. I, I'm a mechanical engineer and I build processing plants that get the job done serving customers. So at some point, you've got to go on the premise of the evolution, as you say, and there are team, uh, terms like Kaizen, which means continuous improvement. You've got to just realize that when you start on day one, you've got a really good competitive foundation to work from, but you're going to be a lot better in three years from then. And, and the key is get started and get started with something that works. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Pat. And again, uh, we're really interested in follow, following your progress here, or as you fellows say, progress. And uh, thank you very much for, for, for the time. Thank you, Jack.